Hi, this is Miriam, and I'm going to be interviewing my dad today. And the reason why is because I'm doing an inter immigrant interview, and he's one of those immigrants that immigrated to the U.S. And so I'm going to ask him a few questions. So uh, the first question is going to be, where were you from, and how did you get to the U.S.? Where I'm from is a very difficult answer uh, to give, but uh, the reason for that is because I was born in Africa. I grew up in Yemen, went to school in India. And, you know, we traveled to multiple different countries before actually coming to the U.S. So where I'm from, the world, but ethnically, which means where your parents from and where they, their grandparents come from and where their grand-grand-grandparents come, they're all Indians. And so um, ethnically, I'm Indian, but where am I from? Uh, I don't know. I'm from the world. <laughs> I'm an international citizen. The next question is, uh, what were some of the reasons you decided to immigrate? Um, well... Uh, my dad, when he was living in Yemen, uh, was uh, uh, working with the university and also working with the embassy. And one of the people that uh, he was helping uh, while he was at uh, the embassy was uh, Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa uh, was known for um, building homes for poor people and things like that. So my dad actually helped her. He helped her get her bank account. He helped her build these homes for the poor people. And, and they were doing good work in, in Yemen. One of the problems is that Yemen is a Muslim country. And you cannot talk about your religion, but the, the mullahs, which is the priests in that uh, in the Muslim country, was, didn't like the fact that this was making Christianity look good. So um, one of the things they did was they just said they were put my dad under a microscope, and they ended up finding a Bible uh, on a coworker that had uh, my dad's name in it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, when they found that, uh, the Muslim priests decided to put a fatwa. A fatwa means uh, a order to kill the whole family. So they were going to come to kill our whole family. And uh, my dad tried to appeal to the president. And uh, um, ultimately, they couldn't do anything. And they said we had to leave the country uh, and leave everything. Car, house, everything. We just had to pack like little stuff and leave the country. And the American ambassador and the cultural attaché is actually the ones who actually protected our family and got us to the U.S. Actually got my brother here to the U.S. first. And uh, ironically, when uh, Uncle Neil came here to the U.S., he, uh, in the 80s, he actually went to Las Vegas Christian Church, which was Las Vegas Christian Church back there, back then in Las Vegas Christian School, and uh, is now a venture. And so he's been going to that church for many, many years. And when I came to the U.S., which is later, uh, uh, as the years passed in 1991, I actually went to the same church that you did. Wow. Anyway, uh, that was a good answer. How did you feel when you first arrived? Ah, I was uh, free because I didn't know what to expect. At the same time, I was very excited because you know, everything was brand new. And I was, because of, I, was, I came here alone, I flew out here by myself. I was a teenager. Uh, it was really uh, super exciting, but at the same time, scary because you know, I didn't know how to. Uh, you know, maneuver the system, and uh, um, I didn't know if I could handle it myself, but everything worked out great. So, who is your first American flat friend? Tell me about them. How did you become friends? Ah, okay. So, my first friend was uh, Mara. Um, so, she and I became friends because my sister uh, um, uh, lived with the family, and was, she had like an adopted family over there while she was in, in the U.S., and uh, Mara was uh, their daughter, and so when I came, they kind of adopted me as their kind of their son as well. And so Mara and I became really good friends, and she helped me figure out you know the American way and uh, understand Americanese because Americanese was different than Englishese. <laughs> in India, we spoke British English, and in America, they speak American English, and so I had to learn how to pronounce things differently and say things differently and be understood differently. So, or where did you live when you first arrived? What was surprising to you? Ah, uh, I lived in a dorm in college, and what was really surprising to me was how much stuff people had. Now, I had very little, very few things, right? Basically, my backpack and 20 bucks is how I got to America. I didn't have anything. I lost all my bags and everything when I came. And I literally had a backpack and 20 bucks in my pocket. And uh, so it was amazing to me that people had so much stuff. They would come to the dorms with car loads of stuff. And even though they were coming from home, it was like amazing. And they would just throw things away like it was, you know, it was nothing. And uh, of course, I'd never seen anything like that before. So what was your first job? My first job was working at a pool hall. A pool hall is where you pay pool. And like you know, they had the little balls that you hit and stuff like that. So I had to take care of that. And there were a lot of football players from the football team in college that would play pool. And so 
it was actually kind of a fun job because I had to watch the pool hall, you know, and uh, uh, and take care of all the pool stuff. But I got to play with all the football players who are all actually NFL players today. Wow. Yeah. What was your favorite thing about America once you were settled? So once I was settled, what I found is that there was so much opportunity. You could do anything and you could try anything and you could get good at something and people would recognize you for it. And it was always surprising to me why everybody didn't try everything. So when I got here, I, was just, I did every sport. I was doing everything. I was, you know, doing math classes that were just way harder than, you know, I'd ever done in my life and just started excelling at it. And, you know, I, I was getting recognized for a lot of that. I uh, ran for president of multiple different groups, engineering groups and, you know, science groups. I, I got to lead worship because, you know, they would just let you. And I thought this was great. So uh, that type of opportunity never happened where uh, everywhere else I was at. And so this was great. It was completely different and awesome. That's awesome. What did you miss most about your home country? The food. <laughs> <laughs> the food? <laughs> yep. When I came to uh, college, I went to Nebraska and the food was bad. <laughs> <laughs> like what kind of food? Meat and potatoes. And that's about it. It was bland and no spice. And I wanted curry. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the phone, Mommy, send me curry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of our interview, I do have guys. a funny story. So I was on, on the phone, and uh, um, my roommate was listening to me talk. And then after I hung up the phone, he was like, wow, that was really cool. It's like, what language was that? I was like, English. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious.